Hey there, everyone. We are back. It's Weather for Weather Geeks, back after my uh, Christmas vacation. I hope you had a good holiday with friends and family. The uh, weather was pretty benign the whole time I was gone. I really didn't have to plug in too much, which is nice. I love looking at the weather more than just about anybody you know. But it was nice to uh, step away and let my brain kind of relax and switch off of weather mode for a little bit of time over the last seven or eight days. But we're back at it this evening. We've got lots to talk about as uh, we have... Uh, a changeable pattern here in the short term and lots of thoughts on the longer range as well. I'm getting a lot of questions on social media. Hey, what's the deal with winter? When is it ever going to start? So some people are longing for a little snow and a little cold. Some are happy enough if we don't see another flake uh, this season. But uh, I have had a lot of questions about uh, the uh, mild pattern we've been in over the last few weeks and whether or not it's ever going to get cold. And the answer to that is yes. And we'll talk about the longer range more. In just a second, uh, with a few more days left in the month and left in the year, here's a look at the December numbers. We're running almost four degrees above average now at the airport after this chilly start to the month. Since the pattern flipped right around here, we've only had two cooler than average days, and they were barely cooler than average. That was last Saturday and then on Christmas Eve, the uh, 24th, just a hair below average. But you'll notice a lack of real harsh cold this month. I mean, our coldest high temperature was back on the 8th, 27th. Every other day has been within shouting distance of average. Even the cooler than average days have not been all that far below average. And, of course, it's come with a lack of snowfall. The last time we had more than a trace worth of snow at the Youngstown Warren Airport was back here on the 8th with 0.3, our biggest, 20, or our biggest calendar day snow total of uh, December so far was back on the 6th at 1.3. We, uh, we had some traces in the run-up to Christmas, but, boy, what a paltry month in the snow department, the 12th least snowy December on record at the airport with only 3.7. Now, uh, it wasn't that long ago we had even less snow in December. The December of 2014 and 2015 were not uh, as snowy as this one. We had less than three inches. Uh, I think it was less than three for both of those months. So this is three of the last five Decembers that have been relatively snow free in our region and sandwiched in between a pretty snowy stretch in December in 2016 and 2017. But this year has been more like 2014 and 2015. Where's the snow on the ground? It's nowhere east of the Mississippi with the exception of some areas near the US Canadian border. It's mostly out here in the Dakotas and into the Intermountain West, but boy, what a hole in the snowpack uh, for this time of the year east of the Mississippi. All right, it's not snow, but a little rain that we've been contending with over the last few hours and it hasn't been much. Just a little touch of rain or some sprinkles. And we're expecting a few more rounds of wet weather as we head through the night tonight. A zoomed out view shows the rain trying to blossom again to our west as of about 7.15. There's even been some thunder and lightning near the Ohio River in south and southwest Ohio, east of Cincinnati and east of Louisville uh, so far this evening. That uh, band of convective activity stretches down into parts of the deep south. This is a kind of a spring-like system. It's bringing a lot of warmth on the east side and a lot of cold air and wind on the back side and so you've got a severe weather threat and you've got a blizzard threat in parts of the Dakotas. Blizzard warnings are out in uh, eastern North Dakota, parts of South Dakota, and even a handful of counties in Minnesota and Nebraska this evening. Nothing like that here. In fact, it'll be a warm night tonight, uh, rainy at times, few rounds of wet weather, but uh, as a lot of people head out the door on a Friday morning, if you do have to go to work on Friday, I know a lot of people are still off for the uh, the week between Christmas and New Year's, but if you do have to work on a Friday morning, maybe there's a spritz or a sprinkle or a shower here and there, but I don't think there's much consistent rainfall as Friday gets underway. Our uh, rainfall totals over the next uh, 24 hours, again, most of this coming tonight. Uh, look at our computer model spread here. Lowest numbers shown on the RPM, close to maybe two-tenths of an inch. Some of the higher numbers on the NAM and Canadian model are up eh, north of half an inch. I think a good average would be about a third of an inch to a half an inch worth of rain tonight and uh you know we're not going to add much to this tomorrow with uh, you know just a couple of showers around especially in the morning temperatures will keep rising tonight uh, it's probably about as cool now as it's going to be all night look at these readings as you wake up friday morning around sunrise it'll be in the 50s and that means it's going to be a warm afternoon despite some clouds around and not much sun i think we'll, we'll flirt with 60 in a lot of backyards these aren't records the records tomorrow are in the upper 60s, so we won't be near records, but still, of course, way above average by about 25 degrees. Weather Service does have some uh, wind advisories out for the Lakeshore counties and then heading back towards I-71 and into central Ohio as well. That's where the windiest of the weather will be, although wind will be a factor here. When I recorded this video at 718, we did not have a gust reported at the airport locally, but it was gusting uh, above 20 in New Philly and Akron and then close to 40 
closer to I-71 from Cleveland down through Mansfield. Winds will become noticeable tonight and into tomorrow. Now, these might be a little overcooked here, especially these numbers out here, but you get the idea. It'll be windier to our north and west, but I think you'll still notice the wind here locally tonight into tomorrow with perhaps some gusts north of 30 miles per hour. And I can't even rule out a 40 mile per hour gust on a few occasions, both tonight and during the daylight hours tomorrow. So it's not going to be a calm, warm day. It's going to be a windy, warm day, but uh, won't hear too many complaints, I suspect, with readings in late December making their way into the upper 50s to around 60. Best chance for showers, I think, is in the morning. I'm not sure if uh, this is realistic tomorrow afternoon with this many showers around shown on the latest run of our in-house model here, but a small chance of a shower will stick around into the afternoon. Uh, and then a cold front drops in tomorrow night, heading into Saturday morning. This is the uh, cold front that will bring more seasonable weather as we kick off the weekend. Kind of a classic winter day coming up on Saturday with a thick blanket of clouds, maybe a stray flurry. Temperatures hardly moving on Saturday, but a better day coming up on Sunday as that high slips off to the east. The sun will break out. We'll probably touch 40 and maybe even lower 40s in some spots. All right, of course, we have New Year's coming up next week. After a nice day Sunday, clouds will increase Sunday night, and I do think it'll turn in to be, it'll turn out to be, I should say, a, a rainy day on New Year's Eve day on Monday. Uh, this is uh, 1.52 in the afternoon, the rain pushing in, it's just going to be a soggy afternoon. Now, there'll be a lot of people out and about for the New Year celebrations uh, Monday night, and I think the rain will try to taper off as we head towards midnight, a, a little too early to get too specific on the details here, but... If a dry slot tries to work in, if this low track is right, there probably is a punch of dry air associated with that low pushing overhead. If this is right, the rain may very well taper off by the time uh, the ball drops in New York City and our festivities here locally in Youngstown and surrounding areas really kick into high gear. And if the low track is right, I think we'll be on the warm side of things for most of the evening. You know, for a lot of the evening and maybe up through midnight, we might be in the upper 40s to around 50 degrees outside, so not a cold. New Year's Eve. Now, the cold air will wrap in later in the night, and then on New Year's Day, the first day of 2019, uh, it's going to be a chillier day, but not that cold. Lower 40s, that's not as warm as Monday will be, but still is above the average. A pretty benign day on New Year's uh, Day with maybe not much more than a, a sprinkle or a flurry. All right, I promised a little bit of a long-range discussion here since I've been off and we haven't done Weather Geeks in over a week. I thought I'd update you on the longer range. First of all, if you remember our winter forecast and any seasonal forecast we do, part of what we look at is the past in order to try to figure out the future. One of our big analog years this year, a year most similar uh, in the atmosphere and what's going on in the oceans with a budding El Nino in the Pacific, uh, one, of the, one of the years that's the closest match to this year is the winter of 1987 into 1988. And what I wanted to show you is how the winter progressed that year. This is December of 1987. Uh, this 3.1 figure here, that's our departure from average for the month. So it was a warmer than average month by about 3 degrees. Not that dissimilar from this month, really. We had a warm Christmas that year at 51 degrees. And much like this year, it was colder at the start of the month than the middle and latter portions of the month. So December of 87, reasonably similar to what has happened in December of 2018. This is uh, January of 1988. Here's our temperature departure. Notice it was a colder than average month. And we did have some legit cold uh, after the new year. We had a high of five on the fifth, some below zero temperatures here. There's a goose egg there. Temperatures moderated some later in the month, but January was a noticeably colder month and also a snowier month. Although it was not a really snowy month by January standards. 10.4 was the uh, total in January of 88. That is below average, but still snowier than uh, than our December has been this year. So the, the overall idea here is uh, the winter got harsher as it progressed in 87 into 88. Here's February of 88, 2.4 below average, about 17 inches worth of snow. That's above average by about five inches. Uh, and notice, you know, there's some legit cold here with Plenty of uh, temperatures in the single digits. Uh, it was not a super crazy cold month of February. I'm expecting uh, this February to probably be colder than the February of 1988. But the overall progression of things was pretty similar. And, you know, you, there's lots of winter left. The winter of 2014-2015 was a real cold winter here locally, but December wasn't that bad. Kind of like uh, this winter here I'm showing you. Uh, winter really kicked in hardcore in January and especially February of 2015, while December was a pretty benign month. So we've seen this before where December's not that cold, not that snowy, and everybody's wondering, hey, is the winter ever going to start? This winter is kind of a bust. Uh, watch what you wish for. Uh, there's lots of winter left. 
Here's uh, tonight's run of the long-range European modeling showing temperature departures from average as we head into the new year. Uh, it's a it's a kind of a coming and going situation for the next week to 10 days. We're going to get the occasional cold day and then the occasional mild day. There's not a strong signal either way through about the first week to 10 days or so of the month. And then the, the modeling has been trying to clue in on this idea that the cold will try to lock in for a time as we go into the middle of January and probably through the second half of the month. So look at all the blue here as we go deeper into January. This is right around the 20th, 21st, 22nd. That's a cold looking weather map, although the biggest anomalies, the biggest departures from average, uh, likely to be off to our north and west. But still, this is a definitely a colder looking sequence than we've had in December. So I think we're on track for uh, the overall idea in our winter forecast that uh, January and then especially February would be when winter would really make its presence known. We never advertised a harsh December at all. This winter promises to be kind of a flip-flop from the last couple of winters, which started with a bang, and then were pretty benign later in the season. Uh, of course, we've had two very warm Februarys in a row. I do not think we're going to make it three in a row this year. So, lots of winter left. If you are a cold fan, if you're a fan of snow, if you're a teacher, hoping for some uh, snow days as we head into uh, uh, the January and February stretch, I think you're going to get uh, what, you're, what you're wanting. You just have to be a little bit patient. Thanks for checking out tonight's weather for Weather Geeks. I'll see you back here tomorrow evening. I'll have an update on the January forecast and a full 2018 in review uh, New Year's Eve on Monday on Weather for Weather Geeks and my weather blog, ericwfmj.com.